Hey guys, I'm Jordan and I'm here with another Lent devotional. Uh, we've been meditating this week on the reality of God and today I'm going to talk about how God is love. I want to start with a beautiful poem in 1 John chapter 4, it's verses 7 and 8 and it's a really good one to memorize. It goes like this. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God and the one who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. This is the word of the Lord. So keep that in mind. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, we can't fully talk about the reality of God being love uh, without discussing the Trinity. It's that idea in Christian thought, it's often talked about and not often understood, uh, that God is one unified being while at the same time he's three distinct persons. I like to say that he's one what and three who's. That's helpful for me. The concept is that the three persons of God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, have always existed and always will, non-physically, in love. The whole concept is a bit of a mind bender, but stick with me for just a minute. Since before time, the three persons of God have existed in a love relationship. There's a fancy theology word that can help us. It's called perichoresis. Uh, its most basic meaning is to turn around or to rotate, but in this context, it's come to mean a circular movement, kind of like a dance. And this is the idea that the Father loves the Son and the Spirit beautifully and sacrificially and gives himself, fully pouring himself out. And the Spirit loves the Father and the Son and gives himself. And the Son gives himself in love to the Father and the Spirit. You get this idea of a beautiful movement of self-sacrificial love working in unity kind of like the movement of a dance. This love relationship, this divine dance has always existed before time and it always will eternally. God is one what? And the three who's of God exist in this eternal state of divine love. All right, that's step one. Step two is a lot easier. Uh, because of what Christ the Son accomplished in his life, in his death and his resurrection, we have been offered adoption as his children, as fellow heirs with Christ the Son. We are invited into the love relationship because of Jesus. We are invited into the dance. Okay, let's go back to the poem, 1 John 4. Beloved, hey, ones who are loved, who are we loved by? Jesus, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. Um, the church that first received this is explicitly probably told they're loved by John, who's writing this. It's a beautiful letter. Hey, beloved, ones who are loved, let's love one another. Let's give up ourselves. Let's elevate one another above ourselves. Why? Because love is from God. Love flows out of God. It finds its source in him. The one who loves has been born of God and knows God. Born of is not something we say often. It uh, feels like something out of the Lord of the Rings, or maybe it's churchy for you, uh, but it means being a child. If we're born of someone, that means that that someone is our parent. So it's, it's simple. The one who loves is a child of God. And we know this because the Son of God, Jesus, loved us and gave himself for us. Remember Galatians 2.20? Now we are the children of God because of what Christ has done our adoption, and we know God. Those who do not love do not know God. That is a harsh word. Just let that sink in for a minute. Those who do not love do not know God. It goes on to offer a final explanation of all this. Ready? Because God is love. We have been adopted into the divine dance of eternal love, and according to John, if that's true, we will know love, we will display love. You cannot be a participant in perfect love and not share that love. So much so that if you do not show love, John looks on and feels confident to say, you must not know God's love. You must not know God. We'll be known by our fruit. And my prayer is that our fruit will be a harvest of love. Today, I just want to encourage you to take some time in the quiet. It can be as little as a minute. Maybe try setting a one minute timer on your phone and pray asking God, Father, Son, Spirit, how can I grow in the fruit of love in my life? Who can I help? Who can I encourage? Who can I share the comfort of the gospel with today? And in that silence, allow the reality of the God who is love to wash over your mind. 
I love you, Emergence, and I hope these devotionals find you well, and I hope you have a great day.